32 years ago on a September afternoon, if you went to Barry's Thunder Road, you saw cars like this, 34, five window Ford Coupe that could get it on. This was the car of Roy Pappy Forsythe. And that car keeps coming back. It's part of the tradition of the Milk Bowl. Hello everyone, I'm Ken Squire and welcome to the 32nd Vermont Chevy Dealers Milk Bowl. There's no other race quite like it in the country. They call it the toughest short track race in America and for good reason. The good reason? Well, there's three of them. And to find out more about it, here's a former champion. Ron Barkham out of Winooski, Vermont. He used to be a great basketball player as a kid. You wouldn't know it now. Ron, three 50 lap segments. The pole sitter starts up in front of that first 50 laps, then you reverse the field, he goes to the rear, and then they do a third segment. That's a lot of work in one afternoon. Well, it is, because you're going to be coming from the rear twice if you're doing any kind of racing at all, Ken, and uh, this is a tight racetrack. These cars are real fast, re real responsive, and it's hard uh, with this field being as competitive as it is to get back to the front, and that's what it takes to win the race. So, three 50-lap segments. That's what makes up the toughest short track race in America. Stand by. And right now, let's join Paul Griffey with the man who's on the pole. So, Vader TV, you're sitting on the pole. You're running a good lap. You ran a little later than some of the other time trials. Was, was it easier to run later? How were track conditions later on for time trials? Yes, but uh, the track is good. The, the, the time is good, and I'm so happy. It's a dream for me, you know. I am come here when I am have seven or eight here, you know. And now I have the pole on the make ball. It, it's incredible. Okay, your first pole of the year. Do you think this could lead maybe to your first win of the year also? I hope so. Yes, I want to win. Life. You're born, you're all potential like a blank slate. You get to fill it any way you want. Nah, you're a canvas. Yeah, you're like a brand new canvas you can go wild on. Nah, maybe you're more like a lump of clay that can be molded into anything. Well, the idea is simple. Fill up your life. Just keep drugs out of it, huh? After all, your life is the only whatever you got. It's a life or drugs situation. Whatever your needs, we've got the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sign. And see your Vermont Chevy dealers. The starting lineup for the 32nd Annual Milk Bowl. Presented by your Chevrolet dealers of Vermont. Looks like this. On the pole with a new track record, Sylvain Mativier turned the high bank quarter mile at 12.245, breaking the old record from a year ago by Dennis Demers of 12.283. In the second starting position today will be a fellow Quebec driver. It'll be Claude Leclerc of Montreal starting beside him. In row two, racing Ralph Nason is ready to go to work with that Chrysler product out of Unity, Maine. Starting beside him will be the defending Milk Bowl champion, Dave Whitlock from Ontario. Starting fifth will be Brad Layton from Center Harbor, New Hampshire, who has been in a war all season long with Nason. In the sixth starting position, last year's pole sitter, Dennis Demers of Shelburne, Vermont, number 86. Going seventh is Mike Rowe of Turner, Maine. In the eighth position, Tracy Gordon. In the ninth position today will be Jerry Babb from New Gloucester, Maine. Starting 10th, John Paul Sear of Milton, Vermont in the number 32. It's Dave Pinkham, number 61 for 12th. In 13, Mike Batchelder from Perkinsville, Vermont in car number three. The number 16 is Kip Stockwell, a second generation racer out of Randolph, Vermont. Stockwell in the 14th position. Going 15th today will be Leo, Leo Poulton of Bedport, Quebec. In the 16th position is a veteran, super modified, veteran everything stock car driver in the Northeast, Jeff Stevens of Kennebunk, number 44. It's Pete Rondo of Saco, Maine, starting 17th, number 5. It is Adam Friend, starting in the 18th position, car number 97 out of Pittsfield, Maine. New Hampshire driver, number 02. Buzzy Bazanson 
Then in 20th, it's Steve Knowlton in the 1X from Ipswich, Massachusetts. It's Jay Karen, number seven, out of Williston, Vermont, another of the great Karen racing family to work today. And out back in the 22nd starting position for the first 50 lap segment by time trial, it's Greg Berger Blake, who's been a champion at Thunder Road in late model sportsman competition. And that uh, car will be an interesting element to add to this field. Berger Blake making his first American Canadian tour start. Field lining up and preparing for a start. Sylvain Bativier, there's the 16 car. That's Kip Stockwell, who had a third place here back on Memorial Day of 95 to get the season started with his finest performance on the American Canadian Tour. Front row, Quebec drivers. Sylvain Metivier with his finest lap in motorsports to put him on the pole with a new track record for Thunder Road and the great veteran Claude Leclerc standing alongside. And you see the intrepid down on the inside. There you see the 44, that's Jeff Stevens coming up and a Vermonter on the inside there, Mike Batchelder out of Perkinsville, Vermont in the Quest American Telecom car. Pace cars ready to come in. Get a little nervous about this time, Ron? Well, I think there's some white knuckles out there right now. They're gonna be ready to go though. When they get the green flag, all out forgotten. 50 laps, the first segment of the 1995 Milk Bowl. Off to a clean, ah, did not get a, get a clean start. They didn't like the way they brought them down. Worst thing in racing, for, from all standpoints, fans and drivers. Get you all psyched up, then you have to sit down, start over again. All right, back to the top of the page, and this is a good start. On the outside, Claude Leclerc settles down and tries for a go. But Matibier fights him off. On the inside, the number 10. Racing Ralph. Oh, into the side of number 11. And they both plow into the infield. And they keep on trucking. Leclerc tied up. Number 10 falling back. Track stays green. But TVA gets a big break and goes out in front by 15, 20 car lengths. Certainly looked like Ralph Nason wanted some real estate that Claude Leclerc wasn't ready to give up yet. And uh, got them together early in the race. Might take. Uh, the Nason car right out of this competition. Nason is slowing down to the back straightaway in number 10. Nason trying to get it back in and he's in trouble. They've completed two and he continues to keep rolling. But one of the leading contenders, Yellow is down, is in big trouble. Front end knocked in on car number 10. Tom Curley had about a 30 minute meeting with the drivers this morning and warned them about trying to harpoon each other. Nason gets across number 11, and the result is that he's back in the pits. Whatever your needs, we've got the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sign. And see your Vermont Chevy dealers. The ACT season points leader, Ralph Mason, in the pits right now. They're working on his right front tire. They got the hood off, and they're in there going hard. They're going to try to get him back in the race. But right now, they're not sure if he's going to be back racing again today. Matibia ready to bring the field down. Up beside him is Brad Layton as they cut and shoot. First caution of the day as Mason got in big trouble. Back straight away. Whitlock goes to the inside for third. He's under Demers and he's making a solid move. Whitlock and Layton, third and second respectively, as the field begins to shake out. The number 44 car continuing to wheel. Working his way up through the field, Stevens. And he's tucked right in behind Kip Stockwell in the 66 as he tries to find a place to make a move. 15 degree bank turns, newly surfaced a year ago and a new track record 
to begin this day. 55 going to the inside. Brad Layton sneaks a peek. Here's Layton trying the bottom. Sylvain Matibier gives him room. He tries to shut him down, doesn't make it. Got a little wobbly and that's all that Layton needed. Brad Layton, who started fifth in the event, charges out in front. Layton going for his seventh win of the season with a nice maneuver there, Ron. Yes, he found some room down underneath and uh, got the car to stick there real low, made a good move on uh, the 28 car. Got a little contact, but made it by Ken. He's gonna be a tough man to catch right now. Now remember, one point for a win. A perfect score would be three points for all three segments. Take a look here at Mike Rowe in number 24. He's in his own little battle with number 37, Jerry Galanis of Scarborough, Maine. They're back in the field, but trying to get themselves some running room. That is back in the seventh and eighth position. Mike Rowe in the 24 continuing to work. Meanwhile, up in front, look at this one. Here's Whitlock diving down to the inside. Hard to get any momentum built up coming out of the turns down there, Kenny. He's gonna have to get a good clean shot or make some contact if he wants that spot. What, what makes it hard? Well, the other guy's pinching you off. You can't get in the accelerator quite as quick as he can uh, without using up some of his space, so. He's gonna to have to get a good clean shot or plan on uh, making contact. That is Sylvain Bativier, the pole sitter who is holding Whitlock or, and trying to contain him. Whitlock continues to look inside. The yep. thunder and lightning, the American Canadian, there's Whitlock under with trying to make a clean move and this time coming to the Widowmaker has Bativier pinned. Bativier trying to hold him well, back. Got trouble on the back stretch. Big spin on the back straight away. Berger Blake is in trouble. A couple other cars are down. Let's see, the number seven car in trouble. Jay That's, Karen. And he's out of the Chittenden County area of Vermont. Jay Karen comes back on. And the number 27 in trouble as well, Jerry Babb of New Gloucester, Maine, the Lewis Chevrolet. Trouble coming out of turn two, wrapped up three cars, and brought out caution on the 17th lap. What's the vision like coming off these 15 degree banks? Do you see much? Uh, it's not all that bad unless you've got a sun problem, which I don't think they have yet. The sun problem usually occurs uh, going into three, never coming out of two. But I believe before the afternoon's over, they may have a sun problem. We'll take a quick break and be back with more. The 1995 Milk Bowl from Thunder Road. Whatever your needs, we've got the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sign. And see your Vermont Chevy dealers. Field doubling up on a restart in the 1995 Milk Bowl. And up in front, it'll be Brad Layton in the 55. Beside him is Silve Matibier. Then back in the third spot will be Whitlock on the start. Starting in fourth will be Demers. Those are the front four. A lap to racing. Claude Leclerc, who was in that incident back at lap number three, is back on the track and has worked his way up to 16th. Ralph Nason had not come back on. Berger Blake has pitted in these non-counting technical laps. And now coming back on the track and headed down the back straightaway. There you see car number 10, Nason, coming all the way in on the tail end of the field. He'll start dead last. Well, this ought to be an interesting start, Ken, because you know the 28 car has got to pinch the 55 car to, to regain that front spot. And uh, when he had the inside spot, he gave the Leighton no room at all to run on the restart. We'll see what Leighton does for him. There's the break, and there was trouble on Whitlock's car. He slipped back a spot. Caution is out. Ooh, now watch this one. This is where you can get in big trouble because those guys out back 
are full in the throttle on these 600 horsepower cars. Nice, co nice catch. They all were able to stay up there. All right, ready again. Whitlock falls back another time just a bit there, Ron. Now he picks it up and we're away. Well, there's Leighton trying to move. But TVA out a little in one and two, and they get such a good break. But TVA's got a chance to drop in and block that inside groove. Yes, he did. He got a good start, uh, partly because the uh, 92 car of Whitlock didn't get up the speed right off. Well, when he gets those tires cooking, he'll come back after those two leaders. Showing 19 of the 50 laps in the first no bowl segment complete. Out in front is Bradley in that second spot. The TBA. And the war on up front among these three. 44. There's Jeff Stevens working on the back end of number 37. Knocking on that back end of Larry Glennis's car and not getting through. Let's see if he can try it again here in turn one. Gets down on the bottom. Doesn't find the running room there. And is willing to wait and be patient. Hole opens up again. It does not go. He does not even attempt to use that. Notice that 37 working a little higher. That car just isn't handling right. And Stevens ready to pounce. He made a good move in the first three laps. It took five positions. Dennis Demers is falling back. And Mike Rowe in the 24 is on the move. Here's the 44 under the 37, but not getting there. Tries it again in the Widowmaker. Stevens down on the inside. He lost a tire cut on that contact. He's gone to the pits. Oh, that's too bad. Jeff Stevens coming off. Tire down on number 44. Ooh, hard hit down here. And getting sideways. Getting collected in the back straightaway was Demers. Dennis Demers getting whacked a little out there, and he lost a spot. Brad Layton continuing to build up a big lead. Take a look at Nason back on the track, running many laps down, just trying to make some up here, get himself back in the money in the next segment. The number 10, the Dodge car having its problems today. Odd break early in the race with him and Claude Leclerc, the outside pole sitter getting together early in the race. Uh, could take uh, Ralph right out of a point race here because he was your point leader going into this event. The 55 goes down into turn one, and there's the interval back to the second place car, which now is number 92, Dave Whitlock. There, the 1X comes scooting up the inside. Steve Knowlton still trying to make some positions out here. 30 of the first 50 laps have been completed. Two cautions thus far. The leader is Brad Layton. If he wins, he's got to go dead last to try to work his way back through the field. That's one time they don't mind being sent to the rear, Kenny. <laughs> yep. You can come up with a perfect score in this one. Win all three segments. That means you scored three points. You've done a day's work. Mike Rose, number 24, running very well at the present time. Yellow is out. Caution coming down. We've got a car off in turn two. Ralph Nason came out and went back into Leclerc and nailed him solidly off turn two and gets set down. Black flag, we don't know if it's for the day or for the segment, but the consultation flag was more than consultation. That was a see you later. Black flag thrown for Ralph Nason who came back and looked like the old days out at the Mallets Bay Raceway back about the 50s. Claude Leclerc pits car number 11, tail end rumpled on that one after that altercation at the very outset of this event. I don't believe either one of those two gentlemen are real happy right now, Ken, and uh, knowing Tom Curley the way I do and haven't had heard, heard that he made a speech this morning, I would think Mr. Dason's probably done for the day, and even though he is the current point leader, favoritism isn't one thing that ever entered anybody's mind here. So Nason uh, apparently had a score to settle. He settled it, and he settled himself out of the milk bowl. At least that's what it appears right now. Right, a little trouble out there in the uh, second turn on lap 33. What happened out there? Yeah, it was 
uh, we had uh, came out of the pit. We had got in a skirmish on uh, lap two. And uh, the, uh, we come back and we were going. And, uh, and we was, uh, you know, going along there and uh, passing a level on the outside. And he come running up into me in turn three and four. And so when I went into turn one and two, it was, uh, you know, he was up in the middle of the track. And I started down. He came down. I'd already been committed to go on a gas. And it was just too late to get him. Okay, you got the black flag. It looks like you stopped for now. Can you make it back into this race? or? Uh, well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. They're, whatever they're doing. You know, uh, that's up to the officials, whatever it is, you know. Okay, Ralph Mason, the season ACT points leader right now. He's in the pits with a black flag. With 32 laps complete, we're set to race. Down to the line, 18 remaining in the first 50-lap segment of the 1995 Milk Bowl. To bring them up, Brad Layton looking for another victory, maybe on his way to the American Canadian Tour Championship. Whitlock, last year's winner of the Milk Bowl in the Quality Care Ford, starts beside him. So it's a pretty good looking front row. You got a Chevy Lumina on the point, Ford on the outside. Old time stock car racing happening in the toughest short track race in America, the Milk Bowl at Thunder Road in Barrie, Vermont. With Ron Barkham, I'm Ken Squire, and they're settling down for a restart with 18 to go. Leighton gets the jump, field comes up, Whitlock stays with him, and they're away. Yellow is out. Hey, Whitlock's had trouble on two restarts now, Ken. This will be in the third in a row that he hasn't been able to generate the speed. Maybe he's got a shifter problem, or maybe he's trying yeah. to set up Mr. Uh, Brad Leighton on this deal. But Seems like a shifter problem, perhaps, because he fell back so dramatically. All right, he got it cranked that time, but he still fell back a couple of car lengths. And Leighton streaks out in front. Now Whitlock settles down. He takes the high line and goes chasing after number 55. Brad Leighton in first. Number 92 in that second spot. There are your two leaders. They try to draw away. Jeff Stevens is back on the track after he made the run early in the race, past several cars, then at a tire go down, and it comes from the rear, and he's trying to fight his way back in. There you see him, closing up on John Paul Sear, series champion of the American, uh, American Canadian Tour late models a year back. So there you see your lead car, number 55. And that's Leighton out in front. Right after him comes Whitlock, the Ontario driver, in number 92, running in the second spot. And maintaining third with his hands full out there. The 28. That's Sylvain Metivier. And here comes Dennis Demers right after him. Demers in the 86 in fourth. And you can see right behind him, the 37. That's Larry Galenis. Staying right on top of this thing. Correction, that's the 17. He changed that. That's Tracy Gordon. Tracy Gordon in the 17, right on the back of Demers. The 17 staying in that fifth position. Leaders going away. Looks like there's gonna be one point. There's now nine laps left. And there's your sixth place car, number 24. That's Mike Rowe, the great veteran, former state of, champ state of Maine champion. And behind him is the number 37. The 37 is Larry Galenis, and he is being challenged right now by number three, Mike Batchelder. Batchelder in the white, red numeral number three. Looks like the old Despo car right there in the ninth. Coming up next on line would be the 12 car, Leo Poirier. If you look further back in the field. And you see the 44, but it's a lap down perhaps after it had to stop for that tire. Maybe two laps down. Six laps remain in the first segment. Five laps now to go. As we look at this battle further back in the field. Galenis holding on to Mike Batchelor. Galenis in the 12, Batchelor in the three. And drawing away, Brad Layton 
to win the first segment. He's in lap traffic with Whitlock chasing down after him for two points. It'll be, as we get to the end of this first segment, number 55, the winner for one point. It'll be Whitlock finishing second for two points. And to come across in third, it looks like Sylvain Matibier is going to stay up in there. Didn't think he'd be able to hold that spot. Yeah, they were really pressuring him, and he had his hands full, but he held on to it uh, with only two laps to go. I would say he's going to be a solid third place in the first segment here. Sylvain Matibier is put on a fine show. He sat on the pole, stays up in there. White flag is out. One more lap to go in this segment. Demers is back there in fourth, and you see the 17. That's Tracy Gordon in fifth spot as they come down to the flag. Checkers are out, and the 55 will win it. Going away, Whitlock will finish in second, and Sylvain, the TBA, has a tremendous race, comes home third. Set on the pole, and it seemed to just spark him right up. Great finish in the first 50 laps for Matibia, able to pick up a third place worth three points. The fourth position would have been the number 86, and that was Dennis Demers of Shelburne, Vermont. And then finishing in fifth was car number 17, Tracy Gordon of Strong Main and the RNL Enterprises, Gordon Lumbering Chevrolet Lumina. So those were the uh, top five, but the big story was the incident right at the start when we saw Claude Leclerc get across the bow of uh, Race and Ralph Nason, and Ralph wasn't about to back off. Uh, Ralph's not one that likes to give up anything that he figures as he's earned on the racetrack, Ken, and he thought he could get underneath Claude at that particular time, making an early move knowing that the cars up front are fast and if you can get away here in the first second you can make it easy on yourself but they got together and continued to stay together and broke apart on Ralph's car and he came back and retaliated and I don't think ACT or the officials are going to take too well to that we'll yeah, find that out. came back out he went back after Leclerc parked him off the second turn and they the officials parked racing Ralph Nason his racing may be over for this milk bowl. Uh, more from Thunder Road as we get ready for the second segment and give you the scoring. After we get out and talk to the guy who's just pulled back into the pits, Paul Grippy is standing by with the winner of the first 50 lap segment. Congratulations, Brad, on the big win out there. It looked like an easy run for you. Yo. You were even lapping a few cars. Yeah, um, I didn't really want to. You know, uh, it's a real tight track, and once you get into lap traffic, you know, it's anything's vulnerable. But, um, you know, the Chevrolet uh, co-ed naked car ran good the first segment. We got two more segments. I guess that last in this one. I, uh, I was fifth fastest in time, Charles, so I was fifth on the grid. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next segment. We had a good, clean run that time, and um, it'll be tough. You're near the top in the point standings. This helps you out. Makes you a little confident? Well, no, because this is just one segment. It's over, overall three segments. So, um, you know, yeah, it's a little feather in a cap for the day, but, um, you know, we're not looking at the points yet. We just got to stay consistent, and, you know, if we win some more races, um, we'll be there. Okay, congratulations, Brad. Late in the winner of the segment one feature. He's got some work to do the rest of the day. Thanks a lot. Whatever your needs, we've got the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sign. And see your Vermont Chevy dealers. Want to come up and play with the pros? Can't do it if you stay down with drugs. Cause flying an F-18 at 500 miles an hour with the Navy's Blue Angels means you're at the top of your game. And the only way to get there is to stay in school and stay drug free. Cause flying, like living, is a life or drug situation. Now we're ready for the second segment of the Milk Bowl. And the way they'll line up is as follows. On the pole is Jeff Stevens in number 44. Beside him is Jerry Babb. In position three, Greg Blake. Then comes Buzzy Bazanson in 02 starting fourth. Fifth will be number seven, Jay Karen. In the sixth position, number 97, Adam Friend. Going seventh, number five, Pete Rondeau. In the eighth position, Claude Leclerc, number 11. 
Then going ninth will be 61, Dave Pinkham. Steve Knowlton in the 1X is 10th. Kip Stockwell is 11th. And going 12th is John Paul Sear in the 32. 13th is Leo Poirier, number 12. 14th is Mike Batchelder. Larry Galanis in the 37 is 15th. Mike Rowe is 16th in car 24. Then it's Tracy Gordon in the 17. Dennis Demers in the 86, 18th. 19th is Sylvain Metivier in the 28th. The 20th car is Dave Whitlock in number 92. And the winner of the first segment, Brad Layton, number 55, will start in 21st. Now, one car was disallowed and disqualified from the event. That was Ralph Nason. It's going to cost him the series championship this year after that run-in, or a couple of run-ins, uh, with Claude Leclerc. He has been set down and his number taken down for the day. And the replacement car would be number 74, Jerry Lesage, to start in 22nd. As far as the points are concerned, the leader in points after one segment, Brad Layton, one point. Low point wins in this kind of an event. Second, Whitlock with two points. Third, with three points, Sylvain Bativier. And fourth is Demers with four points. And fifth is the number 17. And we're underway. Tracy Gordon, fifth place. We're back to racing. Got a car round right off, Ken, the 97. Adam Friend, but he's getting back going. And there is no caution flag. Oh, a second car around. And into the infield goes the 44. That's your leader, Jeff Stevens, to seem to lose it, coming out of four. He's back underway. And a lot of cars are slipping and sliding all around the racetrack, as if the track conditions have changed right. Well, we just had the uh, finish of the late model sportsman and in the interview of the trophy presentations out there. Maybe they left some fluid on the racetrack. Jerry Babb at number 27 for the moment has the advantage. Babb is out in front and Claude Leclerc at number 11. He's found himself second place. The car outside of Babb is being shown as a lap down. And in third place is Kim Stockwell, the number 16 of Stockwell. Well, there's your leader. And he See that lap car trying to get his lap back. Working on the outside. 27. Jerry Babb continues his own war down the main straightaway. The 97 right there with him. Adam Brent, the lap down. Babb stays in front. Jerry Friend trying to hold his spot on the inside. Brad Layton back in the 15th position, fighting his way up through the field in the 55. You see him on the bottom of the racetrack there. Pinned in by car number three, Mike Batchelder. Tries to work his way up through. Hard racing to the second segment to come from the back of the pack. And that's where the hard racing is right now. You can see. Those four leaders really pinned in there, Ron. The yes, they are. They're, they're finding it. It's time to take their time. They know they got 50 laps to make them uh, some ground up here, but they know that they can't wait awful long on this quarter-mile racetrack before they run into the leaders. And Whitlock is being very patient, just sitting out and back in that number 92. Oh, oh one Mike Rowe goes. over turn two. Mike Rowe right off the top, and that's going to bring out a caution at lap 10. What do you think that was? Tire cut down? I'd almost have to think that something broke or a tire. We've had a couple of the late model sportsmen today, and now in the tour cars that just absolutely are going right off the track. And we had one go into the wall earlier in the late model sportsman edition with Ron Wesson. And I believe they're, they're cutting down some tires. So it's been a, a strange afternoon. It started relatively cool at Thunder Road, and 24 is back. Back on the track comes Mike Rowe of Turner, Maine, and the K&K excavating Chevy Lumina. You see him pulling back up, but he will go to the rear as he brought out the flag. Let's review the front of the field for you as we see them single space down the back stretch. Take a look at them. There you see that 30, the uh, uh, 27, which is Bab out in front. And the car that's tucked uh, right in behind him there is the uh, 1X, which is a lapped car, I believe. That is being shown as the 11 car, and that's Claude. Claude Leclerc would be your second place car. Leclerc in number 11 is in second place. Then Kip Stockwell is your third place car as he comes to the line. Kip Stockwell from 
Randolph Vermont in third behind Leclerc. Now back in fourth position. That's the 51 car. And at the keyboard there, a correction, that's the 61 car, is the Dave Pinkham. And there you see the 55. The, the one X comes up next uh, over on the overall part of the field. Let's see, that would give him what, fifth position? Fifth position it is for the one X this afternoon, Steve Knowlton. He picked up a couple of spots they took away from him. Going back to the uh, sixth position and coming down out of turn number four. This guy had a very good run in the first 50 laps of this race. Really, although he may want, looks like he almost wants to pit. Now he's going to double up. So Tracy Gordon is right back into his spot. Gordon into the sixth position. And coming up to seventh is Pete Rondeau. Beside him for eighth will be Leo Poirier on the start. Then in ninth will be the 32, John Paul Sear. Beside him is the 37, which is Jerry Galanis. And then comes Sylvie Matibier in the ninth position. Matibier, Paul Sitter in the 1995 Directly behind him is Lake and Demers and Whitlock. And those three, four, are the heavy hitters in this 1995 version. Around the outside, Claude Leclerc scoots into the lead. Claude Leclerc going for individual honors at number 11. Gets himself up through, and Kim Stockwell is beginning to ride on the outside. Stockwell under challenge in the back straightaway, going for three. He was ready to make a move for second, and all of a sudden, he had a whole winch, rear window full of that car number 51, and away it went scrambling up through the field. Dave Simpson, I believe, Ken, and uh, he just got by Kemp to take over third place. Then he is blind and up to third. Stockwell getting flipped here in the 1X. Gordon got into the back of Stockwell and the 1X up on the outside. Steve Knowlton made a move. Made a nice move through. Stockwell falling back, and the man on the charge is the 55. Just made a beautiful move to get underneath the 28 car of uh, Sylvain Mativier on the back stretch. It looks now to try to get to the outside of Kip Stockwell, I believe. Pete Rondo is out there in the five, rim riding through three and four. Rondo makes the move, and look at Layton come out. He slipped right through on Sylvain Mativier. But down to the inside, Demers made the move, and then three wide in the back stretch, and Whitlock found a hole. And Whitlock picked up some valuable real estate there, Ken. Picking up four position on cars that all ran up front in the last segment. And made it all in one corner, the 24, Mike Rowe down in turn four. Whatever your needs, we've got the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sign. And see your Vermont Chevy dealers. 19 laps complete. Double file order has been given to the field. Mike Wilder setting the field back in motion. With 31 laps to go to complete segment number two. And there you see the guy that made the big move in one lap. Knocked down three cars. Whitlock in the 92. Defending champion. Just scooted to the inside. Found the hole. And on the length of the back stretch as everybody was taking a different line into turn three, he made it count. He went down where you usually tweak the car so hard you can't make it work. Now there's Mike Rowe coming back on after his problems up here in turn four. The turn remain veteran back on the track. And I'm sure that they're going to set him 
as he spun to the inside. Let's see where they're going to put him. Thought they'd set him back. Well, Leo Poyercar, Kenny, the 12 and the 24, both pitted. I believe they'll add them to the rear of the field. Well, there you see number 55, Brad Layton, coming by. He's one to watch. And he's back in 11th. He'd gone all the way up into 8th. He finds himself in 11th, and up to 8th is going to be Woodlock. Demers had made a great move. He'd gone under a couple of, then he found himself backed up. 55. Brad Layton. Just having an outstanding day in this event. So, once again, Claude Leclerc from the point. And beside him, the number 37 as we get set to go. Yeah, 27 in segment two. Bam, pulls his car up. Nice, clean start, I believe. They're getting yellow. A little bit too much of a jump. Let's see if everybody can get them. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. The 74. Solid wrap into the back of number 97. Then we got some uh, fiberglass and plastic some out fiber. on the track. Indeed. Jerry LeSage, who was that replacement driver. Field is in order. One well, of the hardest things to do, Ken, from a driver's standpoint, is to be ready to race and uh, have the, the yellow thrown instead of the green. Yep. You really anticipate the green flag. And, he, and as you saw, he got he was on the brakes hard, but he just couldn't get it woed. Picking up parts and pieces from the nose of Lesage's number 74 after it got a little bruised on that restart. It was a nice start through three, but in four, the 11 took a big jump over Bab. They were not even, and they wanted them down to the line in better order. And it was the end of the field that took the, took the abuse. So, ready on a restart. This is at 19 laps. Beautiful day here in the Green Mountains, granite capital of the world, Barry, Vermont, the home of the Milk Bowl, for 32 years of the 36 seasons that have been run on this high bank quarter mile. Used to be held the week before the World's Fair down at Tunbridge. You know, over the past a decade or so, it's been back on Labor Day, drawn a great crowd. Pretty much tell autumn's in the air when you get to the milk bowl. Oh, another false start. Another false start. And that 27 dab. Again, is that a gear problem or what is it? It just doesn't stay up there. The 11 comes off, Leclerc pretty smooth, and he's done this a lot of times. Okay, they're back together. 1X pulls up into his spot on the outside of the second row. Steve Knowlton, who started 10th in the second segment. Now, he, Knowlton had a big problem, and he comes off. I think Knowlton broke the transmission big time. I don't think uh, race director Tom Curley is going to put up with too many of these fault starts. They're going to get a, a warning here very soon. I bet they are. I want you. I want your hand on my back when I make my way through a crowd. I want to feel you watch me when I talk to my friends. Talk to me. Tell me about your friends, your family. Look at me. I want to spend my life with you. And I'll never hurt you, never lie to you, and never put you in danger. There's a time for us to be lovers. We will wait until that time comes. Ready for a start, and let's see what happens up in front. Down they come, looking for green. And this time they've got it. Nice and even start in front. Claude Leclerc goes immediately back into first. Dab falls to second. Off in third. And the yellow's down. Put a caution down, and I. Uh, well, Leo Poya car on the box stretch. The number 12 car got itself spun around. So they're in one of those 
dreadful places where you lose the rhythm of the thing, and no matter what you do, you come back to a caution flag. Sometimes you can run 20 or 30 laps, and there's that 12 car that spun off and brought out another caution. And in our cautions in this uh, segment, what do we get, three now? Two of them right in the same segment. If you want to count that technical started before, where they couldn't come up online, they had to take additional laps. There's 20 laps on the docket thus far. They went back to a single file, and they're told to cross over, which they have done. So you see LeClerc still in front and Babb still in second. Well, on the one lap they did run, Ken, uh, the uh, 92 car Whitlock got passed by the 28 of Sylvain Mativier. Mativier on the outside, which seems to be the faster of the two lines. Tracy Gordon's come from 17th run, and he's up to a fourth on this restart. Boy, is he having a run. And the 28 car finds itself in six. What a run by Sylvain Mativier. Started 19th. Away and under green. Start back straight away. Lot of work with the advantage. Bab in second. Pinkham still holds his spot in third, but he's got a whole handful with Gordon. Right wide open a little. And 16 off the track in turn one. All the way around and off goes Stockwell. So Kip Stockwell, who has backed up a lot in this race, finally ends up off the track, down in turn number one, did a big looping 360, and that's where it came to rest. It does not appear that he has a whole lot of damage, if any, to that car, Kevin. He may be able to join this field right back again. Hung up he was, though. Yeah, well, they got it away. A couple of manpower. So, 22 are complete. They picked up three laps and once again. The old yellow plague has struck the milk bowl. Stockwell is going to take it in. Have Lenny take a look at it. His dad, the pit crew, on that car. So once again, LeClerc is back to work. They double him up immediately. They're ready to go racing. With Babb on the outside. Pinkham is on the inside in the second row for third. And then comes Gordon on the outside. This should be a bit of a break for Gordon, except three times, Ron, we've seen that LeClerc car just jump out there. The 27 is backed up a little. So Gordon may have to do something really fancy to get himself uh, away from a situation where he's pinned and the inside line begins to roll on him. Well, this is the first time run here for the uh, 27 car, so with Clark having a more experience, uh, you got to think that he's going to be able to handle this. Uh, Jerry Bob's never been to Thunder Road to race, and he just started driving this car after John Lazal had some knee surgery, Ken, so. Back in that fourth row on the inside, that's Whitlock, last year's winner, and he's a cagey one. Let's see what he'll do. As you see that start, back through that night, gets down to the inside, it's even across the front. Babb made a beautiful start, but Gordon made the best of all. He shoots up the outside, dives to the inside, and Gordon is on his way on the bottom. Take a look at Gordon. Live. Tracy Gordon, who started in 17th. And he is up into second. Lot McClurk out in front, Tracy Gordon in second, Babb is in third. On the high side, trying to get, oh, almost getting the wall to merge. Sylvain Petitier wasn't going to give him any room in the 28 car. None at all. For the lead into turn one, with 26 of 50 laps complete. Lot McClurk from Montreal stays in front. And the number 17 
from the 17th position. Tracy Gordon works right there with him. Demers going up on the outside in the 86 and trying to move around the TBA. What a move that is, and look at this for the lead. Back in the main straightaway, even a cross rod as they come down through. TBA falling back. Jeff Stevens gets around him and Demers. Still even across for the lead. Out in front goes number 17, Gordon. Great job there by the young driver, Tracy Gordon. So name of TV has been having his problems with the 28 cars. Some of the other cars have moved by him. The 55 and the 92 having to go at it here. Whitlock in the 55. Or rather, uh, Brad, Brad Leighton in the 55 and Whitlock in the 92. They're working on each. Look at this bump and run up there in turn four. And Brad Layton and Whitlock continue to scoop through traffic. I think that was the TV and they had the sandwich for a moment. Coming around to complete 33 laps. It's still Gordon first, McClurk second, Bath third, Demers in the fourth, Pinkham in fifth. Got a change of position here, then Stevens in sixth. And here comes Woodlock around back. Should make note of that uh, Jeff Stevens job. You know, he started up front in this race, Ken, spun out, went to the rear, and now back up to sixth place. He's picked up some valuable ground. He's got that car really running good. Master of the short track, the number 44. Right at the moment, the man to lead is Tracy Gordon at the 17. Look at this to the strike. That's Mike Rowe, who had trouble up in turn four and brought out a caution earlier, getting back into it another time. Dennis Beneers picks up another valuable spot after having a good first run. So the TBA finally giving ground. Mike Rowe gets around on the outside in the 24. See him down the back straightaway. And with him comes that Vermont car of Mike Batchelder in number three. Looking very strong now. Whitlock just made a move under Jeff Stevens. So we have Gordon leading. McClurk in second, the Mears has come to third, Bab is in fourth. Then you've got Dave Pinkham running in fifth. Woodlock to sixth, Stevens in seventh. And the black flag comes out of Brad Layton. Layton's brought in. I don't know what that consultation flag was for. We'll try and get it for you. Take a look at Whitlock in the 92. Continuing to run his own race and looking very good now. Comes up on Bab. That's for eighth position. 42 laps complete, eight to go in the second segment. That car really slowed down. Bab came out of turn two, gave up a lot of ground. Brad, some troubles with the car. You're in for the pit. Looks like you're done for this race. Yeah, for this segment. We'll be back out for the last one. Uh, you know, I got a little close. Porter's out there, and I banged the toe up a little bit in the car. And, uh, you know, I also got the front end pushed in. It started overheating, and um, I was putting water down on the track, so we, we pulled off. Okay, well, you expect to come out strong for the third segment? Yeah, just as strong. I had a good car, but just got in one of them positions. Okay, Brad Layton's in the pits. Getting down to the side of the time. Side the second segment. In front, it remains Gordon, and he's by himself. But then, Clerk, the clerk is under great pressure from the 86 down to the inside. Here's Demers trying to move through. A couple of flags put out with two to go on the back side. Demers closing in Whitlock. There's three cars battling in that second spot. Leclerc has it, Demers is right behind him, and Whitlock follows him. Whitlock had trouble getting through on lap cars. White flag down. Checkers bring it across and give it to Tracy Gordon in the 17. Gordon will win it. He made it in a handy fashion, but the battle for second right to the line, and that went to Claude Leclerc over Demers. Whitlock wound up in fourth. Thus we complete the second 50-lap segment 
as the number 17 that started 17th in the event, Tracy Gordon picks up the single point for winning the second segment of the Milk Bowl. We'll see where his uh, best offense was the 11th car's defense of Claude Leclerc keeping the other hot runners behind him. Gave him room enough to run, Ken, and have a nice clean finish. I'll tell you, Tracy Gordon's having a great race. You remember he had a fifth in the first segment, and now he's added a first at six points. Boy, he's going to be tough to beat in segment three. So the field pulls off. There's a look at the points after the first two segments. And let's join Paul Grippy with our winner in segment two. Congratulations, Tracy Gordon. You won the second segment. You took the lead on lap 28. It's pretty smooth sailing from there. Yeah, well, I thought I thought I was screwed up. I had to start on the outside way back because we started because we got fifth in the first one. You know, they invert the order, and we uh, luckily it was good. It was a good lane, so we got it up close, up good, and uh, you know, up front uh, real quick and. Uh, it was pretty hairy. I was wondering a few times if I was going to be able to take the lead there from Claude. He was pretty fast. And I got by him, and I noticed he I didn't leave him much. He stayed right with me. So, I was, I, you know, he did a good job, too. All right, a good showing in the first segment, a win in the second segment. you got to be thinking championship right now? Yeah, you got to think about it. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Good luck in the third segment. Thank you. the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sign. And see your Vermont Chevy dealers. You know, I've done a lot of amazing things. People say, Bo, you've run through some of the toughest defenses in the NFL. You are an MVP in an all-star game. Bo, what else is there? Well, today, I found out. Navy, find out more from a Navy recruiter. All right, Dave, after the first two segments, you had two pretty good races. You're tied for the lead so far. Which of them races was your better? Oh, the, the car was a lot better in the second race. We uh, had a bad push in the first race, and we uh, changed the spring and changed the stagger substantially, and uh, the Quality Care Thunderbird handled a lot better in the second race. All right, third segment coming up. You plan to do more of the same, or are you going to put the panel to the floor? No, we're going to, we got to get to the front as fast as we can. We got to keep ahead of Tracy, and uh, I know 86 is right up there in the points, too. We got we to gotta keep, get to the front as fast as possible. Are you starting to think maybe of a repeat as the uh, milk champion here? Well, we'd like to, but uh, see me in an hour. All right, we'll watch him in the segment three. That's Dave Whitlock. Good luck. Thanks a lot. If anyone ever tells you you're not smart enough or fast enough, if they say you're too small or too young, too black or too white, if anyone ever says you're all thumbs or all left feet, they say you're too poor to make it, that you can't do the job or you'll never get it right, if anyone ever tells you any of that, they don't know zip. A message from the U.S. Navy, where we believe the only way to grow is to rise to the challenge. Going into the final segment of the Milk Bowl, and tied for first, it is the number 17. That's Tracy Gordon with six points. He is tied with Whitlock at six. Both of them have now won a segment and put together the kind of finishes that tie them. Now we're up to the tiebreaker. This is it. 
in third spot right now is Vermont's Demers with seven points. So a one point spread among three competitors. Back and forth with 15 points, big draw back to there is where you find the uh, 24 car. And uh, that's going to be a lot of making up for Mike Rowe to do, or for the number three, Mike Batchelor, very quietly has had a very good day. The 55 car is on the point for this race, but he's going to have some trouble in this one. Remember, he got a black flag in the last one. He was throwing water, and they wanted him in before it created a bigger problem on the track. It had nothing to do with his driving style, Ron. It was a technical issue. So he was the first in, and he is the first up. He'll be on the point. Beside him is Pinkham in the second starting position. And then starting third, what's that, the 27 out there? We get ready for a go? That's not the 27 car, yes. And uh, if you look back through the field, they'll have, uh, let me take a correction on that. I think that'll be the 97 for third spot on this one. And that would be Adam Friend, low point. Adam Friend is, is up there for third. Starting beside him will be Kip Stockwell, who went off the track in the first turn in that last segment. Another lap, and they're going to roll. Going fourth is the 18, Rick LaPage. Starting beside LaPage would be the 32. And there you'll find John Paul Sear ready to work. At six, in seventh is Mativier. In eighth is the 37, Galanis. In ninth would be number five, Pete Rondo. And in 10th is Steve Knowlton. For 11th is Mike Rowe, driving number 24. In 12th is number 12, that's Leo Poirier. 13th is number three, Batchelder. And 14th would be the number 44, which is Jeff Stevens. Going to 15th spot, Whitlock is there, the 92. That car that won here a year ago, Whitlock on the inside, 15th. And on the outside of him is Demers in the 86 gets to the 16th position. 17th is Claude Leclerc. In 18th is Tracy Gordon. 19th is Berger Blake. The 20th is LaSage. And going uh, 21st on the field, let's see. That's Buzzy Bazanson in the 02. 02, Bazanson beside him is Bam. Another lap and they'll be ready to turn them loose in the final segment of racing for 1995 at Thunder Road, Grand Capital of the World, Barry, Vermont. 36th season here, the 37th will open up in the month of May. It's been a tremendous year this year with the late model sportsmen. They have put on some really classy shows. And the street stocks, that amateur class, has found a world of its own. Some really young, good racers. And we saw Seymour Bidwell went out here earlier today. Good guy, and uh, he really represents the spirit of what this sport is all about. Okay, let's see what we're gonna get here for a start. Brad Layton is ready to bring him down in that 55. Let's see what he'll do. Got it hitched up, gone. Layton right out in front, as predicted. And they single file into one. So hard to come onto a racetrack where you only run a couple of times a year and harness all the horsepower these big cars have. And this is the time of the afternoon, Ken, that that sun will start bothering them that we talked about earlier, going into that turn three. It may not be as bad as it could be, but it's still going to be a factor here probably before this race is over. And it will get worse as this race progresses. Sun will set a little closer to the horizon and more into their eyes. Battle for third, the number 32, moving up on the outside and trying to move around. He's got the, uh, the uh, front car down the inside, the 97. And you see the move by John Paul Sear, having a very good run, gets himself up in the third, and Sylvain Matibier pops right back into this thing. He's up to fourth and going to the inside. There's Matibier in the white and red numeral car through the Widowmaker and down the main straightaway. And at the end of lap six, he finds himself in third spot. Big iron in the back of the field, beginning to roll. In that pack there, Whitlock is well back. Trying to find some running room for the defending champion as Brad Layton continues to pull away. Layton way down in that last segment after he developed a water leak. Some of the plumbing wasn't working and it cost him dearly. There you see the 92 up on the outside. It's 
Whitlock continues to try to move his way through and directly in front of him is De Beers and the red car, number 44 up on the outside, down the main straightaway, that's Stevens. And right behind Stevens is the guy that could win this thing, the 86 of Dennis De Beers, coming in only one point behind the two leaders. De Beers in 10th spot in the 86. The 86 rolling up into 10th and looking very strong. He's in front of Whitlock. He's going up on the outside of number 12, Leo Poirier, and trying to meander around him here in the Widowmaker. Looks like he's on his way. Right in front of 86 Demiers rides 1X Steve Dalton. Whitlock right on the rear bumper of Demiers. Remember, one point separates three drivers as we come to the final segment of the milk bowl. The 17 car of Gordon. He's beginning to make an impression now. He's up there on the back of Jeff Stevens. He's fought his way out of the rear, and we know this guy is dynamite in traffic. So the top three cars in the milk bowl after two seconds, the toughest short track race in America. You start by as you qualify, like they do down south. Then if you win a segment, they invert the whole field, put you dead on the back, and they do it one more time. And the best combined finish for three 50-lap segments wins the milk bowl. So the pressure's on. Not only do we have a battle up in front for the lead in this final segment, but the real battle to decide the big money is back here in the pack, back in sixth position. 86, Demirs. 92, Whitlock. 17, Tracy Gordon. Here they come, and they're on fire as they go after each other to pick up as many positions, get around as many other cars as they possibly can, try to get away from a man, give themselves a point advantage. Well, if it ended right now, Demirs would win the whole thing. That 86 car of Demirs, recall that he is down one point to Tracy Gordon, the 17 and Whitlock in the 92. It would be a three-way tie if the race ended right now, which means that the decision is based upon how they come across the finish line in the final segment. And right now, as they would come across, De Beers would lead the Whitlock car and the Gordon car. Remember, they're back in sixth, seventh, and eighth. Passing flag is out as Brad Layton continues to make mincemeat out of this pack. And our uh, third and fourth place cars, uh, Whitlock and uh, Demir have got a lot of real estate now in front of them that's open. And if Whitlock's gonna make a move, it should be right now. Here's Whitlock on the inside. Whitlock on the inside of Demir's trying to move down the main straightaway. He gets there, but he's boxed in. Lap car in front of him. He goes to the inside. Demir's goes to the outside. No room. Whitlock makes the move. It's Whitlock in the 86, pulling it off. Scooting through on the bottom of the racetrack as they came up on the lap car of Larry Gillespie. Oh, we got a car around a turn four. Oh, a hard wrap in the wall. 74, Lesage is in it. They all hit the brakes. Everybody misses lap 25. There's 25 to go. Three cars involved, one drove away. Well, that's two. the uh, Sylvain Mativier oh, car. that's too bad. Running good. Sylvain Mativier, who set on the pole, set a new quarter mile record at Thunder Road, is able to drive away from that thing after he got caught up coming out of turn four. And he's got a flat tire. He's gonna have to pick, and he had some uh, a lot of contact in the second race. I thought he hit everything but the lotto, but this time here he comes away with a flat tire. So he'll have to start from the rear with 25 to go. Interesting situation now. Brad Layton in the 55 is your leader. The second place car is the 61, and that's driven by David Pinkham. And in third spot is the 28. That was 28. Sylvain Mativier is now pitting because he pits, that will mean that he'll come back out and start on the rear of the field. So with Mativier's 28 headed back in to change tires, 
It's going to move up into the third spot. Whitlock? I think so. so. It might be. Yes, Whitlock would be. Let's go down to the uh, pit area. Second place car. No, we've, we've still got uh, behind the 55 car. Oh, the 61. Yep. The 61 is still very much in this thing. David Pinkham. So with that crash in turn three, Lesage dropping out. Big break again, and it goes to Whitlock, and they're lining them right up. Ah, we got another car pitting, Berger Blake, who would have been a lap car. And that's a break for both Whitlock and Demers. As they line up, 55 is the leader. Brad Lake, the second place car, Pinkham, is on the outside of the second row. There is a lap car on the outside of the first row, lap car number 18. On the inside of the second row, Rick LePage. Then back in the third row is the 92, the third place car in this race as they battle for the overall lead, Whitlock defending Milk Bowl champion, and beside him, Dennis Demers. Whatever your needs, we've got the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sign. And see your Vermont Chevy dealers. Want to come up and play with the pros? Can't do it if you stay down with drugs. Cause flying an F-18 at 500 miles an hour with the Navy's Blue Angels means you're at the top of your game. And the only way to get there is to stay in school and stay drug free. Cause flying, like living, is a life or drug situation. Green is out. Got it. And on the break. Brent drops right down on the inside. Very good move by that driver. And here's the 86 Demers making a beautiful move on the outside around Pinkham. Demers in the 86 got himself sorted out beautifully. He's gone. He is up into second spot and here comes Whitlock after him and here comes Gordon on the outside. Very good. I thought that that outside line would move a little bit quicker and Dennis Demers took advantage of that. Trapped the 92 car down, got by him. It'll be up to uh, David Whitlock now to put another move on Dennis if he wants to get that spot back. He's got a lot of track, a lot of open track in front of him. I would not go after him to go after him right off, Ken. So now Brad Layton out in front in this last segment, but the war is on for the lead. Whitlock going to the outside on Dennis Demers. Oh, we got a car spinning backwards off turn number three. That's Over into the wall goes number 12, Leo Poirier. Yeah, it looks like something he might have broke on the car that time. There you see Poirier slapped into the wall backwards. He looked like he was wide open when he left the track. Now this is going to be interesting. It's going to tighten the field back up. Put Leighton on the inside. I think Demers on the outside and Whitlock on the inside of the second row. And then we'll go for it to decide the 1995 Milk Bowl Championship. One point after two segments separates three drivers and those three have come up through from the rear in a pack and are now challenging for the lead back with more in a moment i want you i want to hold you for hours at a time i want to talk to you until i don't have a voice introduce me to everyone who's important to you your friends your family look at me i want to spend my life with you I'll never hurt you, I'll never lie to you, I'll never put you in danger. There's a time for us to be lovers. We will wait until that time comes. All right, they're ready to double up and get going with 29 laps complete in the third and final segment of the Milk Bowl. And as they get ready to go, Brad Layton is in front in this final segment. Beside him is Demers. Remember, he is one point behind Whitlock and Gordon as we come to this final segment. If the Demers car can stay in first or in stay in front of Whitlock in the 92, 
and the 17 car. That would throw it into a three-way tie, and the best finish in this segment wins the no-pull. It would give it to Demers, but he's got to stay up in front of Whitlock and Tracy Gordon on the break. Brad Layton gets out in front. Dennis Demers comes right back on the outside. But he's losing a bit of ground here. He picks the pace up out of turn two. Oh! Whitlock had to make a correction, but he stays with it. Usually that'll cost you a few feet. It didn't that time, Ron. Oh, we got a big pile up in the back straightaway. One car up and over another. And the uh, leaders will get by that without a problem. Yeah, the caution is out. The street stocks, it might be a problem, but not here. Well, and Quad Leclerc, again, has been torn up in the front. The number 11, and he had the what, the 0-2, the car that's out there. Yeah, Buzzy Bazanson. Went right up over him. Bazanson looked like he was headed for his roof. I've never seen a more star-crossed driver. He just has the worst darn luck in this race. He comes out year after year, and it seems like something always happens. Yeah, he was ready to run today. Yeah. Qualified outside pole. Very good time for him, but his car is tore up again. And he'll have to make some repairs before returning to this one. And you know, Ron, that's right there where you were making the point a few moments ago about that sun. Now it's directly into the windshield. You're in complete shadow down the main straightaway, but when you come off turn two and down the back stretch, you're blind. It is. A, it's, it's bad at this particular time in the afternoon, Ken, and there's nothing we can do about it. We, at times, have tried to race around the sun by hauling off a while and everything, but it's going to be in your eyes for this period of time, and I think that might have something to do with the other cars getting in it. I don't know if the initial contact was caused by that. So the 02 car, the Zanson, I don't think he really had a chance. There was a couple of cars spinning in front of him. The next thing he knew, he was on top of Claude Leclerc. But the issue still is the drama provided by three drivers. And this will give Dennis Demers a chance to do what Whitlock did, hold that inside groove and get back by him to take the lead. Because Whitlock has pulled around Demers, he will be just in front of him on the start in the second spot. So the question is, can, has Whitlock got enough to deal with 55 Brad Layton? I think he does right now, Ken. I don't know if, uh, and I think he knows that he's got to do it right now to make this thing happen. See them picking up that car that had trouble, Bazanson. The rest of the field is the story on this restart behind the 55. Take a look at these leaders as they get set for business here. Up in front, 55, there you see Layton. Beside him, Whitlock. Whitlock can win the no pull. All he's got to do is stay where he is. If he can get in front of the 55, that's insurance. That'll give him another point. The 86 car, he needs to shoot down the inside, hope that Layton will carry the day into turn number one. And then there is Tracy Gordon. He is tied after two segments for the lead. The 17 and that car 92 each have six points. The 86 car, has seven points. If that 86 car could score in this race, it would throw it into a three-way tie, and the best finish in the third segment is the tiebreaker. So it's all important on this start for Shelburne, Vermont's Dennis Demers. I think Whitlock having to, to be racing for the race and not for a position here is going to be a little hungrier than the 55. The McIntyre Fuels car down on the inside. Demers trying to make that move. He holds Gordon, but he's not able to move through. Whitlock, meanwhile, on the outside, going for the lead. Lap 32 complete. Back straight away and still even across. How about that for some side-by-side -side racing? Whitlock inches out in front. Gordon stays right there in fourth and watches. He knows that with the power these guys have, one little twitch, one tiny mistake, they could take each other out, and he can go play. Well, Whitlock's in a position to be uh, a little hungrier than the 55 of Brad Layton. 
He's in a better spot on the track, and he seems to have worked his way around him. 86. Back there in third spot now, but up in front. It's Whitlock as he gets around the 55. Brad Layton made a good move in that last lap on Whitlock. Came up into his door just a little, tried to shoulder it, not get him out of control, but let him know he was there. And Whitlock drove away from that. Out of control. And remember, the apex of the turn at Thunder Road is right in the center of the corner. So as you come off two and four, the track isn't helping you. It falls away. It's almost like negative camber. You've got to turn the steering wheel slightly to the right. And when you've got a guy beating on your door, you've got to hit him. Whitlock in front with 37 complete. You've got three cars off up in turn number three. Two. Well, out at that was a Jean-Paul Sear car getting together with the 24 of Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe had a tire uh, cut when he was attempting to pass one of the cars up right in front of him. There's Sears 32 coming back on the track. And I think it was a 28 car he got together with, Ken. Uh, Sylvain Mativier. So we'll take this quick break and be right back with more of the 1995 toughest short track race in America. 32nd annual Chevy Dealers Milk Bowl. Whatever your needs, we've got the vehicles to meet them and save you money doing it. Cars that hold a lot of people, a lot of power, and a lot of quality. It's your total transportation center, your Vermont Chevy dealer. We've got vehicles that J.D. Power likes, that Motor Trend likes, that Consumers Digest likes. Vehicles that you will absolutely love. Get to your total transportation center today. Just look for the sun. See your Vermont Chevy dealers. There you see car number 92. Whitlock out of Ontario with a chance to win it back to back. It ain't been done. Crouch won it five times, but he was never able to win it back to back. Whitlock, 13, 12 laps, 38 being shown complete, 12 laps away from doing it. And for Demir's Ron, back there in that 86. Well, he's got 12 laps to get the job done, Ken. He's got to know that the 55 and 92 are going to be racing. 92 is going to be trying to protect what he's got already, and he can't make a mistake. 86, but uh, Dennis Demir has been running good all afternoon. If he gets the break, it's going to be a short time for Dave Whitlock to get it back on him. So they gotta, they're going to be a cat and mouse meeting for a little while here. Not for too long, 12 laps. And don't forget that number 17, Tracy Gordon. Strong Main, RNL Enterprises, Gordon Lumbering, Chevy Lumina. Still could play big in this one before it's over. On the break. Whitlock in front. Layton tries to hold him through four. Can't do it. Whitlock is away. Trying to win it back to back. The milk ball. Demers goes down to the inside, Ron, and Layton's going to give him some room. Well, I think Brad realizes these two guys are racing for the race. He's racing for this position. And we got another yellow. Got a car off in turn three. The 37 bouncing off the track. So Larry Galenis finds himself off on turn three. 40 down, 10 remain. Again, Ken, that was right where that sun is. I'm not certain that something did, he didn't get up just a little bit high and lose it because it has no damage to the car. And sure. nothing apparently broke on it. Sure doesn't look sunny down here as you see him down the main straightaway. But take a look as he comes around turn two. Okay, shaking out the cobwebs and a little dust, dirt. Gets himself in the back stretch. I would believe that the sun is as bad as it's going to get right now, Ken, in this particular part of the racetrack and at this particular time. And the last two incidents have all been concentrated right on that part of the track. Well, all these cars use these Lexan windshields, which really gather up the sun and reflect it onto you a lot harder than the glass does. The glass reflects it away from you. The Lexan sort of draws it in. Doubling them up on a restart, and there is a lap car that now becomes a factor in this, and that is Steve Knowlton's number one X. It's up on the outside of row two. And the 17 car has another lap car besides that Knowlton car down inside of Tracy Gordon as they come to the line. 
is the number three from Vermont, Mike Batchelder, in the Quest America Telecom Lucky's Tri Sales Chevrolet. Doing a good job this afternoon on that car. Hasn't he, though? So Demers gets another shot. The last one didn't work at all. He didn't keep up. He fell back. You could have given the race to Whitlock. Let's see what happens this time. Demers not letting go at all. Stays hitched to the rear bumper. Whitlock trying to win two in a row. Thunders down into that first and second turn area. And Whitlock is away again. And again, Brad Layton gives them running room. Remember, Layton is up there in the position in this race. He's not a lap down the blue 55 as you watch Demers down the back straightaway going to the inside but Woodlock has the field covered for the moment he does seem to have the superior car right now Ken and uh, I think he showed it in the last segment he's showing it again this segment that he may be the first man in Thunder Road history to put away two milk bowls back to back the toughest short track race in America seven laps of completion and car number 92 rolling Dave Whitlock from Petrolia, Ontario, Canada is back in front and pulling away now. 10, 11 car lengths, Demers in second. Five laps to go. Dave Whitlock won the richest short track race at the 250. And now he could be the first man to win back-to-back -back milk bowls. I'm not sure that anybody's won the 250 in the milk bowl the same year. Be interested to find out. With four to go, Tracy Gordon falling back. A brilliant second segment of the milk bowl, but trouble here. And falling back some on the field. Car is just not handling as it was in that first and second second. Double flags coming out, two to go. Very likable guy. Very strong racer. One to watch for the future. He's about to do it again. Looking for his fourth win of 1995. White flag is down. And one remaining in the Vermont Chevy Dealers Milk Bowl. And he pulls out to a 14 car advantage. It's no contest, no contest. Out of number four. Give it to Whitlock, the first man in 32 years to win the Milk Bowl back to back. Did a great job this afternoon, Ken. After that first segment, he had the superior car. Dave Whitlock has won the Milk Bowl. We'll give you the entire points over the top runners in a moment. And let's go down to meet the man who's pulled it off today with Paul Griffey. Here he is, victory lane. Dave Whitlock repeats as the Milk Bowl champion. A great race for you today. Yes, it sure was. The quality care Thunderbird just worked excellent all, all day long. We uh, had a few problems in the first segment with the push, and we corrected it, and it was just awesome, the second and third segment. Okay, you were tied for the lead going into the third segment. You, uh, you had to beat Gordon, and you had thought about maybe beating Demers, and you passed him on lap 31, and smooth sailing the rest of the way? Yeah, well, it was. we had a couple tough restarts there. Brad and Dennis were strong, and uh, I'm glad to see Dennis and Tracy have a good day today. What do you think about repeating as Milk Bowl? Do you think that happened? Oh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. We'll be, we'll be back next year to defend it. Great season for you overall. What do you think? Well, it's, it's been a roller coaster year. We've had five DNFs, but we were winning uh, the big races, and I guess that's what counts. All right, David Whitlock is in the victory lane again, a place he's familiar with. Repeats as the Milk Bowl champion. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you, Paul. Here are the final point standings. With a score of seven, car number 92, Whitlock, wins it for the second year in a row, the first man to do it in the 32-year history of the Vermont Chevy Dealers Milk Bowl. Dennis Demers just drove his heart out, ended up with nine points, and came home in second. And finishing third overall for all three 50-lap segments of the toughest short track race in America, Tracy Gordon holding on for third. And that's the story for 1995 of the Milk Bowl at the nation's site of excitement, Thunder Road. For Paul Griffey and Ron Barkham, I'm Ken Squire. <laughs>